yeah, hey everyone, I'm Alex. I uh, work for a great company called Airship. Uh, like uh, Jason said, they're based in, the company's based in Birmingham, but I live in Chattanooga. Uh, I wanna first start off on a more personal note by just kind of saying how thankful I am to be here. So I've attended Chain React for the past two years and uh, very, very honored, very thankful to be able to present over the course of, or present this year. So uh, over the course of those two years, um, a lot has obviously changed within the React and React Native community particularly regarding TypeScript. Uh, so as I'm sure everyone in the room can attest to, it's kind of impossible to browse Twitter or blogs and not see people talking about switching over to TypeScript. So like if your timeline is anything like mine, you've probably seen things like this where you know you got uh, Ken C. Dodds talking about it, uh, Dan Abramov talking about it, uh, Raphael, who's somewhere around here, he's been tweeting about it for a while. Uh, even the Infinite Red crew, they're, they're all in on TypeScript and, and talking about converting projects over. So if you're anything like me, you might be might get a little bit of FOMO anytime these people tweet about things that you're not currently doing in your work. Uh, so fortunately at Airship, we've moved a handful of projects over uh, to TypeScript and along the way found a repeatable compartmentalized pattern to approach this type of conversion from regular JavaScript to TypeScript. So if you aren't quite as familiar with what TypeScript is, uh, unfortunately we don't really have a lot of time to go it, into any sort of detail, but essentially TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, so it's built on top of the JavaScript you already know, it just has some additional features that make it unique, such as types. So this close relationship with uh, JavaScript is what makes a conversion a lot more manageable than you might think. So throughout the process today, uh, we're gonna be using an existing project of mine, which may be a bit arbitrarily simple, uh, but I don't know, strangely important to society right now, I don't know. But nonetheless, uh, the project's gonna help convey some ideas that are, uh, this conversion is gonna take ha or happen. So one of the great things about TypeScript is that it is very configurable. So we can make it as strict or as loose as we want in terms of type checking. So a common problem I've seen is people trying to convert projects over to TypeScript and basically trying to do it all in one go with a strict configuration so like the initial setup of that is, is way more daunting than it probably should be. So that's why we're splitting up into three particular steps. So each of the three steps that we're gonna talk about today could be the end of your TypeScript conversion, uh, and you'll get a certain level of benefits at each, at each step. So we'll get, we're gonna go from the loosest configuration to the strictest, and then you can make your own judgments about what makes sense for you and your team. So on to step one, uh, we're calling it just make it work. So the goal for the first step is simply to get our code running again without having to make any significant changes to the code itself. So we'll need to set up a basic config file so that TypeScript can know what rules we wanna follow or not follow. Um, and as I mentioned before, this will be the loosest configuration of TypeScript. So here's an example uh, TS config file for React Native. Uh, this, is, this would live in the root of your project. So it has a couple of rules we're gonna gloss over for the sake of time, but I wanna focus on one in particular. Setting no implicit any to false will allow implicit any's. So these implicit any's are used in TypeScript when it can't infer a particular type uh, of a variable. So we're allowing these in the first step just to get our code, to, our project to compile with TypeScript without making any significant changes to the code itself. So the next thing we need to do is uh, is just gonna involve changing the file extensions over from .js to .ts and .tsx. So one slight gotcha with TypeScript is that anytime you wanna use JSX in your code, uh, the file has to end in .tsx, which is a bit stricter than how uh, JavaScript might work. So if you have a larger project that isn't just two, a two screen app with cats, uh, manually changing this over could be a bit more daunting, but luckily there's an excellent tool and properly titled tool called JS to TS Converter that handles changing these uh, file extensions over as well as parsing the file for uh, any JSX that, uh, that might be in the, in the file and naming that with the .tsx ex ex extension in that case. So once we're done changing the file extensions over, we're working with a real TypeScript project, okay? Uh, however, there's probably a decent possibility that you might still be seeing a few errors, which is actually a good thing. So in my example, uh, with the cat app, I was really rushed for time. You know, I had investors calling me. They were like, we need this cat app right now. Um, and I was like, probably need to write more tests. And they're like, no, we have to have the cats. 
And, and so I had to rush into the App Store. Uh, unfortunately, I had a few fundamental JavaScript issues that went unnoticed before, but TypeScript is now able to identify those errors immediately and give me some feedback as to what the problem is. So in this example, you can see I have a log error function uh, at the top. It expects two arguments. However, when I'm using it at the bottom, I'm only passing it one. So TypeScript is able to bring it to my attention immediately and tell me what argument I'm missing in the, in the call. So once I fix these issues, uh, the project should run successfully and we're officially done with step one. So now for step two, we're gonna be explicit. So the next step in the process is gonna be to only allow explicit innies by toggling no implicit any to true. So this means that instead of TypeScript defaulting to an any type uh, when it can't use type inference, it, it's actually gonna give a compile error. So all the places that the compiler was automatically adding an any type will now require you to give it a type or explicitly say it's an any, which uh, contrary, to pop, contrary to popular belief, using any types is fine. Use them when you need to. Um, don't, don't feel any pressure to not, or to, to not use any's. So you can see here in this example, I'm saying that this function uh, expects an image ID a, as a string and a value as a Boolean. So I would then need to go through the application and do the same sort of thing by specifying the argument types for the different uh, functions and methods and whatnot. So this is also a good time to start creating the common object types that are used throughout the project and adding them where possible. So here's a cat object type. You can see all the properties that it has. Um, I'm then gonna use this type all over my project anytime I'm dealing with a cat in the data. So I'm just gonna add it as the type in the function. Another part of this step will be to bring in types from third-party libraries uh, that don't provide TypeScript types. So if a library is written in regular JavaScript, we can still add types on top of it that describe its usage. So there's an excellent open source resource called Definitely Typed that contains types for many popular libraries such as you know, Lodash or React or React Native itself even. So you just need to add at types before the library name uh, and then just add it to your project's dependencies. So this step will probably take a bit longer than that first step, so, uh, but the efforts you spend doing this will pay off dividends once you start adding to your code base and uh, especially when you start refactoring your code. So like I mentioned before, any of these steps could be the end of your TypeScript conversion. So we have uh, many projects at Airship that ended up somewhere in the middle of steps one and two and honestly, they're a lot better off because of that. So, however, if you wanna keep pushing on and go all in on TypeScript, there's uh, only one more step. So we'll call it strict mode. So the last step involves enabling the strict setting, which simply adds a number of strict rules for TypeScript to adhere to. Uh, even though the setting might sound a bit invasive and over the top, uh, these rules really just enforce good JavaScript patterns in your code. So one of the rules enabled with strict is strict null checks. So this was created to ensure that you don't try to use a variable that could potentially be null or undefined. So for example, we have this cat type from earlier and you can see that the age property uh, is optional. So you can see that it's optional because it has a question mark after the key, which means that it could be undefined. So when I try to run the two string method on age, TypeScript is gonna give me, uh, or is gonna give me an error, so I need to make sure age exists first before trying to run that method. Uh, otherwise, I'm just gonna return a, a default string. So depending on the project, uh, there might actually not be that much refactoring for step three at all. Uh, if you're already writing safe and uh, safe JavaScript, then there's a high likelihood that TypeScript is gonna agree as well. So, and that's pretty much it. So we've taken a standard React Native uh, JavaScript project and successfully converted it over to TypeScript in three contained steps. So first we added a basic TypeScript configuration and uh, simply changed the file extensions over. Uh, then we got more explicit about the types we're using throughout the application by turning off implicit innies and creating our own common types as well as bringing in third party types. And then finally, we enabled this strict configuration, which further ensures that we're writing safe and error resilient code. Now, I, I know the title of this lightning talk might have been a bit misleading uh, because a full and complete conversion to TypeScript 
with a robust project that isn't just two screens about cats, you know, could take days, weeks, or even months to, to, to successfully port over. But I want to reiterate the fact that TypeScript can add value to your project, you know, at any step, no matter if you're just changing the file extensions over and setting up the config or you're 100% integrated. So I hope this quick talk has helped clear up some questions you might have had, but as you might imagine, there's a lot more to this process than, than we can fit in in 10 minutes. So please come find me afterwards if you have any uh, more questions about TypeScript and React Native. So thank you very much for having me.